Hello, everyone. Jesse Webb, Traders Pro. Market conditions still remaining bullish in a bull market. Essentially, this means traders and investors should consider trading with a bullish bias on the long side. But that being said, when we're dealing with momentum direction, there are edges or extremes to those directions. And we're sitting at those edges right here where we're at the top end of this rally versus the bottom end of the rally versus the middle of the rally where we're definitely extended into this rally. This is an indicator that I've wanted to highlight a little bit more over this last week because it is uh, sitting right at the upper range of this price pattern. And typically when we start to see this, we start to see two things happen. Number one, we see in this case, we've got really good sentiment just because there's no bearishness in the market right now. Uh, either they've been squeezed out or they've turned the corner and they've jumped back into the market. So things are very bullish right here. But what, we, what we're seeing is we're seeing momentum slowing. And that's obvious just from the, the price pattern here. We'll look at that SPY chart a little bit closer. But now we're seeing breadth, which is which is a confirmation type indicator. We want to see this a good solid percentage of stocks that are uh, in overall uptrends. But when they diverge like this, we typically can get a shorter term top when you have momentum starting to decline, and then you're getting the rest of the laggards that are catching up into that trend, sometimes uh, that are that is the setup for a shorter term reversal. Oftentimes it's it's above the sentiment line, more like this right over here. But in this case, that's uh, that may not be a uh, that may not matter. So we'll keep an eye on that here. But we're definitely at an area where we could get a reversal. The other indicator we'll go through is that buy sell ratio momentum. You can see here. Momentum's actually set up nice for another push or a little continuation of this push higher. We'll see if we get that over the next uh, couple of days. On the longer time frame, the markets look like they want to break out. But if we could get a retracement back in uh, and set up a little bit better base, that would be uh, that would be ideal. Now, the buy sell ratio, we've seen a massive pop in buy sell ratio. This is also becoming unsustainable right here. We're up to six now, and you can start to see the, the width of this. Uh, it finally broke out of that range. It was topping out around here. It looked like it may want to start to squeeze back together. Now we're getting uh, another little push back in. So it's definitely lots of demand still on that buy side. But when we start to see this and start to get this range where historically we just become unsustainable, we have to pay attention to that. It doesn't mean a big reversal, but it does mean that uh, the overall upside is going to be a little bit muted right here. Or uh, uh, we start to see price move higher, and then we start to see fading towards the end of each day or selling into each day. So we'll keep an eye on that this week. Sentiment, are, we're also seeing this peaked in on the 15th of November and really hasn't participated in this last rally up. Let's look at S&P 500. We'll look at all of the indices that we've been focusing on primarily we did see a little bit of a hiccup here in NASDAQ. Let's take a look at that. Uh, not a whole lot. This is actually, you know, this is actually a good thing. This is what we want to start to see is we want to start to see markets retracing a little bit of this move. But this is actually a good looking bar right here. It's hard to see that yellow a little bit, but you can see it's got a hammer type pattern where it, it's, it, it opened, it sold off, and then it rallied back up. So you get this line right here, this tail, this bottoming tail bar where there was an open, dropped lower, and then buying into the end of the day. That, that is an indication that there's continued buying into this market. But tech led things higher, and now we're getting a little bit of a, of a pause right here. So let's keep an eye on that. Uh, for pullback support, we want to see conti uh, continued support right here. S&P 500 uh, uh, has not had that retracement quite yet. We'll see if we ultimately get it. But if we could retrace back to this momentum zone, this 236 line, or at least stay inside of this range on any kind of a pullback, that's ultimately what we would want to see for a retracement, pullback, more support for more upside on S&P 500. So looking for a shorter term pullback with buying into that pullback. Uh, we, but again, the markets, when you get this fear of missing out and you get everybody starting to pile in, uh, we could break out this, this 459, 460 range. And if we can get up above that area and hold it and then do all of our counter trend retracing above that line, uh, we could see significant. 
be watching for a retracement, at least back into this, to these ranges. We could retrace even all the way back to this 440 range on SPY and still have it be corrective or counter trend to be buying into. Let's look at bonds also because they've also been a big talking point. We're continuing to see those bonds move higher off of these lows. Uh, now we're up in this 50% range of this count of, of this entire downtrend. So this low, that high rather, and this low, we've retraced halfway. And we're also back at a major resistance area right here on bonds. So let's see if bonds hold this resistance area here, retrace, if that pulls equities back with it a little bit. But that's kind of where we're at right now in terms of some support resistance locations uh, and dealing with the overall breadth of the market with that buy-sell ratio being as extreme as it is to the upside. We're seeing buy-sell ratios across the board now just in these you know, into the, into the stratosphere, just like we saw the other side of it. We saw them very, very negative. Now they're very, very positive, very bullish. You've got, you know, you've got five, 600 of these stocks in these, in these overall uptrends, 15, 16 to one to the upside. That's really good. Again, long-term, short-term, it's overbought and needs a bit of a, a pause or a counter trend or retracement. That's what we'll be focusing on the next few days and weeks. But let's look at some muscle stocks this, uh, this week. Actually, let's go over to sectors. We, we covered that just quickly. The, the Q's retraced. This, this is an iShare version of that. Essentially the same thing. We're very similar. IYW had that same move. And then Energy, which has also been moving a little bit lower. Uh, we haven't, we didn't look at commodities. Let's look at those real quick. The oil, oil is breaking down. We talked about this pattern a couple days ago, this big reversal. It's following that. It's now a day below this support, but it's at a support range. We'll see if we continue to slide to that 65 on USO or if we get a bounce back to the upside. But it's, but energy continuing to slide. I should say oil. This is USO, which is the ETF for crude oil, continuing to show weakness. That's that's a good thing ultimately for the economy and for consumers. Uh, let's talk about gold quickly because gold is another commodity that has been moving really nicely, had a big gap, ultimately did hit that 191, 192 range and then retrace back in. So a nice setup right here for gold to be able to pull out of extreme and then back inside of this buy zone. It's in a significant uptrend. I would definitely keep an eye on gold and gold stocks. Uh, moving forward, we talked about how to access those gold stocks. If you uh, you quickly can focus on the sectors, go to the sector scan, and then you've got your basic material group right here. And then you can go in and find your uh, gold stocks right here. Gold and silver, you can see a really solid buy sell ratio, 15 to 1. You've got a bunch of stocks in there in that overall uptrend for gold currently. Muscle Stocks Group, if we look at the new buys here today, P-O-W-L, solid, you know, solid breakout, looking like it really wants to continue higher off of a really long base over this one year time frame. You can see how long it's been consolidating. Uh, had a big gap right here. Now is relatively tight. If it can continue and, and break up and hold this range, we could get some momentum out of this. Um, it's a little bit extreme, but not too bad at that point. Perfect looking breakout momentum stock right there for POWL. SPOK, also a nice looking pattern early in the buy trend, uh, bouncing off of a support area. This is the one year time frame, but you can see that support area here. 236 is a little bit deeper. Not a solid bar yesterday, but moving in the right direction. Interesting a continuation pattern potentially for that stock. And then EHT, excuse me, EHTH. Uh, e health, uh, ugly looking one year chart pattern, but long consolidation potentially could be breaking out to that upside. It had really gotten beat up the last few years, and you can see now this long consolidation that upper range around nine and a half. I think it could break, if it could break through that level, could get a shot to 12 just based on that perspective. That's a little bit longer time frame, but you can see the amount of volatility on that stock. There. That'll do it for today's update. If you don't have full access to the software, you can sign up with the link below, and we look forward to having you. Have a fantastic day today.